Welcome back, guys. All right, so this is uh, episode four now of uh, our Learning Monogame series. So once again, uh, if you want to start from episode one, put the link up the top, and we are on the um, we're using this uh, Neon Vector tutorial, which is an XNA tutorial, and I'll put the link for this uh, down in the description of the video as well. So we're on the second page of this one, and today we're looking at not enemies. We did collision episode three, and we're on to the enemy spawner. So Sean Sharp, this one. All right, so we've got the um, a brand new class called the enemy spawner class, and all this is going to do is just handle um, the difficulty of the game and how enemies spawn. So prior to this, if you're following along with my tutorials, uh, we would just put in like a create seeker um, run in the uh, initialization of the game. Um, this is going to we, we get rid of that bit now because this is going to handle um, uh, spawning of enemies uh, through in the update cycle instead of yeah, right in the initialization, right? So uh, what we want this to do is we want to spawn enemies uh, at a slow pace at the start and then increase uh, the frequency of that spawn um, as the game progresses over time. All right, so let's have a look at my code here, Visual Studio, so enemy spawner class. And uh, the first part of this code is uh, a bunch of new member variables. Um, you'll notice that mine's slightly different because I've got this uh, time since last spawn roll. I'll talk about that in a sec. But the uh, spawn frequency, uh, which I have actually set to a float, um, is also... Uh, something that's uh, different to the tutorial. In the tutorial, you've only got these two. So we're declaring the uh, random so that we can um, generate random integers. And then we've got the inverse spawn chance, uh, which is the same uh, as the tutorial, uh, set to just 60. All right, so the way the inverse spawn chance is used is straight up, straight away into the update loop of the um, enemy spawner class. Um, if you have a look at uh, the first line, alright, so let's go through the first line. First we're going to check if the player is alive or not, and uh, if he's alive, then we also check if there is less than 200 entities on the screen. If you wanted to increase that, obviously you can. So this is just the limiter of how many um, enemies are on the screen uh, before we start spawning more enemies. And then uh, my code is slightly different to the tutorial. It's got a uh, time since last spawn roll um, has to be greater than the spawn frequency. And that is just because I'm using a variable step time uh, loop. Uh, so, uh, sorry, a variable step frame rate, right? Um, instead of a fixed step frame rate. Um, and I have to limit that to run every uh, 20 milliseconds on this because I, I want the... Um, spawn rate of enemies to be the same on a slow machine as it would be on a faster machine. So um, at about 20 is close to about um, 60 frames per second basically, um, which is what the tutorial would be running on. Uh, to be more precise, it would be, um, if I wanted to have it be exactly the same spawn rate as the uh, one in the tutorial, which is at 50 frames per second, it would be something like 70 milliseconds. So I'm running this code in here, the spawning code, the spawning frequency, um, every uh, 20 milliseconds, basically, is all I'm saying. And if I wanted to make the spawn rate more frequent or roll for the probability of spawning an enemy more frequent, I could reduce that or increase that to slow it down. So that's an, a little uh, number that you can tweak as well. Um, all right, so jumping right into the loop, we've got the uh, time since last spawn roll. So that is, uh, again, my little bit of code. So I'm setting that back to zero. Um, and then if you have a look down at the end of that um, update loop, uh, what I do is increase the time since last spawn roll uh, by the number of milliseconds that have passed since the last update loop. So uh, that slowly, what happens is this slowly increases until it reaches uh, 20, the spawn frequency, and then it runs this code in here, which is which spawns some enemies or uh, rolls a dice to see if it should spawn enemies or not. Um, and then it also resets that back to zero, so it doesn't run this code 
until 20 milliseconds have passed. And uh, yeah, so that's how that works to um, sort of normalize um, the spawn rate of enemies across all machines that I happen to be running this code on because we don't want faster machines to run through update cycles uh, more quickly than slower machines, right? Um, okay, so um, when it's found that, yep, okay, so we're going to start spawning some enemies, um, what we're doing here is this ran.next and then the inverse spawn chance number. That What that is, it generates a random number uh, from zero to the inverse spawn chance um, figure here. So at the start, uh, when, when the inverse spawn chance is 60, this is saying, um, this is basically giving it a 1 in 60 chance of spawning a, a, a seeker enemy, right? Because um, what we're doing here is just creating a seeker at a random position. Um, and then we do the same thing down here with the uh, wanderer enemy as well. So the uh, get spawn position method uh, is a new method that we're creating that's down here. And what that does it, is it generates a, a random vector position that uh, lies within the screen and is further than 250 um, pixels from the player, right? So we don't want it. We don't want the enemy to spawn right on top of the player or right next to the player. Um, so uh, we have this in here. So it's just a while loop. So what happens is, um, well, first we declare uh, a, a pos variable, which is a vector two variable. Uh, so at the moment it's null and it jumps into the while loop and we generate a pos, uh, a vector two for pos. Um, and that is just a random position that is within the screen. So zero, zero, and then to the max and minimum of the screen size. And that gives you a random position. And then if that random position is further away than um, 250 pixels, which we see here, so the distance squared um, between the position that was generated and the position of the player, basically, so but squared, um, because and we use squared once again because uh, it's easier to compute the square of the distances than it is to uh, compute the actual distance between the two. That's why I use squared. And in turn, uh, this 250 has to be squared as well, right? To keep it like-for-like uh, -like comparison. So if that distance is less than 250, um, then we break out of this loop, and then we use that uh, pos value and return that into, uh, into this spot here, which is the position of where we're gonna spawn the enemy. All right, makes sense. Um, I think that makes sense. It's pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, the only other difference uh, that you'll see, well, there's actually quite a few differences. So in the tutorial, if I just have a look at the code real quick, um, he's done it, implemented it differently. He's got the uh, do and while. You can do that as well, but uh, I wasn't really f that familiar with using this um, this structure in my code, so I was much more familiar with uh, just using a normal while, infinite while loop, which is what that was anyway. So uh, that's why I've done it this way. And uh, what else? Um, yep, so you'll notice that I pass in game time into the update loop of my enemy spawner, as well as into uh, the uh, create seeker and the create wanderer. And that's because um, because I'm, I'm working with a different way of handling time in my game, um, doing it using real world time rather than uh, frame rates, uh, I need to pass in the, the game time variable from the game root. So all the way in the game root, you'll see that Monogame gives you the game time in the update loop, wherever it is, update, there it is. So that, this is just by default, Monogame will give you that. Uh, so you can manage time in your game. And I always pass that through any of the update loops, so, except for the input loop, obviously. So so that I can pass it on to any other classes that need to use it. So in the uh, enemy spawner, um, you'll notice, uh, yeah, so in my two create enemies, because these uh, methods do need game time, and I'll go through that in a sec. But uh, 
Yeah, so uh, the next part is um, over here. So the inverse spawn chance, uh, we saw here earlier that sex is set to 60. And at the very start, it gives you a up in this line. We roll a dice against it. And if, um, so the maximum chance, the maximum value that this can be is zero, uh, is 60 and the minimum is zero for this number. And so that gives us a, a one in zero chance uh, sorry, 1 in 60 chance of getting the 0 and spawning the enemy, right? But over time, um, we've got this that runs in the update loop as well. Um, so if the inverse chance is more than 20, so say at the start at 60, it was more than 20, then what we're going to do is reduce the inverse chance value by 0 0.5. And so the next time this runs, it, this will have a 1 in 59.5 chance of spawning a seeker and then it'll keep going down every um, so basically half a chance every uh, every second is the way I've got it set up so every second it goes down half or it grows down to two uh, two values every uh, every second right <laughs> yeah I think that's what it is um, all right so uh, you can sort of I sort of just played around with that value so if you wanted your game to spawn to get more difficult more quickly you can um, increase that number so the um, inverse spawn uh, inverse spawn chance goes down faster over time um, or if you're just following the tutorial and just doing it by frame rate, it's probably a lot easier to do it that way um, yeah, yeah, then you can just set that value. You don't have to worry about uh, per time. It's just all by per frame update. All right, and then right at the end, uh, we've got this uh, reset, which just resets the inverse spawn chance back up to 60. So the difficulty gets uh, easier. Um, all right, so yeah, I noticed that was a little bit weird how it's an inverse spawn chance rather than just having a spawn chance. Um, but I suppose that allows you to use like whole numbers. I don't know. Um, and that's the enemy spawner, I think. So, um, a couple of other things that I've changed in my code, uh, which you can get from my GitHub, um, and that is mainly in the enemy class. You'll notice if you're following with my videos, the last video I mentioned that there was an issue with the collision and how that was happening, and that was because of this not being applied to uh, not having the game access to the game time. Um, object uh, which we now have access to because we're running this um, we're running the enemy spawning through the enemy spawner which is in the update loop prior prior to this um, it wasn't possible for me to pass in uh, the uh, game time to the create seeker method under the enemy class so now that we do have access to game time I was able to implement uh, to add game time as a um, as an argument for handling collisions and therefore I'm allowed to do uh, this which is multiply the change in velocity by uh, total seconds that have passed since the last time uh, that this uh, update was run and I was able to then also increase the um, effect of the uh, the collision so when uh when the two enemies ran into each other we are applying a, a vector or an acceleration change which is a change in velocity um, over time um, by a much larger figure here so i've got this here set to seventy thousand, and that's resulting in a much nicer collision between enemies so when i run it in a sec you'll see that um, the enemies will start bouncing off each other quite nicely and I'm quite happy with that one uh, let's have a look. The other ones was in the behaviors. I wasn't able to um, set the speed of the enemies uh, in, based on the behavior. Uh, so this is the same thing. This is a, a change in velocity over time, which is acceleration. Anything to do with time um, in your game needs to. You need to think about uh, whether you're using a fixed step frame rate, variable step frame rate. So in the tutorial, they're using uh, a fixed step, but for mine, using a variable, I'm using real time instead of frame rate. So I have to multiply it by total number of seconds since the last elapsed time. So this is um, 
basically we're increasing velocity by this much however this um, calculates to uh, per second right so um, yep so that's in that one that's follow player and then move randomly again it's the same thing so any changes in velocity over time or acceleration um, you need to multiply it by a total number of seconds and that will allow your game to be to run at the same speed um, no matter what uh, machine, how fast the machine is running at, because you know real time is real time, right? It's the time that we all experience. Um, yep. Yeah, all right. So that's it for this uh, section of the tutorial. The next part um, we're going to be looking at uh, scoring and lives, uh, which will be pretty cool because that will make it into a real sort of have a real gamey feel. But at the moment, it's uh, it's pretty good so far. So let's uh, give this a run and show you. I'll uh, say, so, uh, remote machine, uh, local machine. Yeah. So I tested this out on my um, Xbox, just my retail Xbox, and it, it works pretty pretty nicely. Um, if you wanna um, see if you can get your version running on the your own Xbox, uh, I'll put a, a a link to the video on how to do that um, up the top now. Um, and you should be able to get that, get the game running with, um, on your Xbox because modern games are awesome, right? <laughs> and you're running a universal Windows platform. All right, so okay, lots of seekers being spawned. All right, I thought something, I thought something was going wrong there because no wanderers were spawning. All right, and you can see um, that collision's working real nicely now. I can blow these guys up. Um, I tweak the the speed of all the enemies and uh, the difficulty, and you can see it in the um, up here. I fly the ship over there. See the spawn chance. So you can probably have a go at that and see um, get your game running as hard or as um, or as easy as you want it to, or as fast. You can change the speed of your enemies. That's part of the fun part, I think. All right, so that's that's the game running. And I think that is the end of the video, guys. So once again, um, there are tons of comments uh, throughout my code. Oh, this one's a little bit light, but I don't think there was really a lot to it. Uh, there's this big section of comments here. So anyway, if you want to uh, read through those comments, um, I put a link to the uh, GitHub for this project uh, down in the description of the video. You can uh, check it out from there. Um, see how it runs, play around with the numbers if you like. And... Um, yeah, I'll see you next video for scoring and lies. Cheers, guys.